Hey guys, I'm back here for some more standard. I've made some updates here to the mono red aggro deck and ended up um, deciding to kind of lower the land count a little bit. I do still like four copies of Mishra's Foundry and four copies of Sokinzin, which have both been great, but I decided to kind of shift it down to a little bit of a leaner build. Before I get into it here, um, first of all, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. If you do like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe dropping a like or a comment. Um, or sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like my content. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for being here. It really does mean the world to me. Your support uh, is everything. So I appreciate you guys so much. So let's get into some of the changes here. Um, one of the things that I've added actually was um, a card that I've seen here in the new set, Frantic Scapegoat. Um, and it just seems like a more effective card than... Um, the phoenix chick it just seems to do a little bit more being able to give menace to one of our like really powerful two drops like codebreaker on two um, or feldon um, or charming scoundrel just feels really good and having it come out as a one one haste menace um, is also great so that's kind of close to flying it's maybe not quite as good but i think the ability to give menace to another creature kind of edges it a little bit over the top so i'm going to try it out it feels good i still want to have you know kind of the, the main spell package here just to really emphasize the prowess here for fugitive codebreaker and monastery swift spear so we've got four in the festivities which have just been amazing against boros convoke um still useful against like blue white control if they play like sunset reinforcements um or, or whatever that card is called and then also, having access to a full play set of Play With Fire, Lightning Strike, Invasion of Tarkir, just to really dominate the creature matchups. And then Invasion of Ragatha has been great about just kind of getting the last couple points in. Also, having the utility of having the one damage target some of like Boros's, um, you know, X1 creatures is great. Or just targeting your own Feldon to get an extra card draw. And then this is also really good at completing Invasion of Tarkir. So just sort of a nice combo there. The other thing is I did add back in two copies of Monstrous Rage. This is still a fairly creature light build. We have 14 creatures in the main deck. Technically we have 18 with Kumano faces Kakazan, but pretty creature light. And then we kind of try to make up for that a little bit with our man lands here with four copies of Mishra's Foundry and four copies of Sokinzen. So with that, we really try to emphasize the prowess here and get as many spell triggers as we can. So yeah, I like the, the changes here. The sideboard remains the same. So I will have a link here in the description for my previous video where I kind of go over the sideboard plan and it's still pretty much the same. And then also um, I'll have the deck list in the description as well, both on Moxfield and on untapped.gg. So all that said, let's go ahead here and we're gonna go ahead and get into some matches. But again, I just wanna say a big thank you guys for supporting me, it really does mean the world to me. If you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it, so if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via super thanks. So if you want to leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it. You don't have to, but if you want to show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the, um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. The deck has been performing pretty well. I think going into this video, it's at about 69% win rate. Um, over, I'm not sure quite how many matches, but we'll get into kind of the data here at the end of the video also. Um, yeah, this hand looks great. We've got stuff to do, turn one, turn two. So we're gonna just go ahead and lead out with Kumano faces Kakazan. This is still our best turn one play available. <coughs> And now since we are in the play, um, I do kind of like 
having the scapegoat give uh, menace to our own swift spear as we can push through some extra damage there hopefully being on the you know being on the play we can get the jump on them a little bit so I also do like going swift spear here into monstrous rage and that is pretty tempting as well and I think I might actually do that um, we're not losing a whole lot here and just having a monstrous rage resolve is super powerful because that will push this up to an x4 interesting they could have used that to take down the swift spear but maybe they're just going to try to race so i'm not really sure <clears throat> okay so here we can float the mana and then go invasion and i think that that's perfectly fine we could also just go scapegoat um save this until like they have like a creature in play but like we're pushing a ton of damage um and then we could also save end the festivities if they try to like hold back a blocker or something. So yeah, I, I think I think there's enough of a benefit here to just push invasion this turn that floating the mana is gonna work just fine. And this gets them really close to the red zone. So since they're already at 9, we're not going to try to complete this, and we're just going to go ahead and typically go face. Most of the time, um, unless you're in like a very strange circumstance, you're not typically completing the invasion of Ragatha. Although there were certainly, there'll, there'll definitely be like corner cases where you're going to want to do it, but having them solo, they're now getting in burn range. Opponent's going to need to have a pretty powerful string of cards here to get out of this one. Alright, and that should do it here. Getting close to Diamond Tier 2, so yeah, happy to be making the climb. We're almost there. I think you probably could find a way to make room for like the third Monstrous Rage in the deck, but I think just like with, a, with a, the creature count we've got right now, Two feels good. That might change, but that's sort of where I'm at right now. It's also nice, I've seen a fair amount of uh, Boros Convoke. And unfortunately, those have not been recorded games, but they do show in the data set. So those have been good so far. Now I think I just want to lead out here with Scapegoat, because then we can go like Swift Spear into like Monstrous Rage, give it um, Menace. So normally I would lead out with Swift Spear, but I think I like leading out with Scapegoat here.
could go scoundrel. Um, yeah, I guess like they could have fading hope, which is why I'm a little bit unsure about running out the monstrous rage here. So I think maybe just scoundrel into um, putting like a wicked roll. And we'll go ahead and give that here to the uh, scapegoat. So if they do decide to bounce, it's, you know, kind of, I guess, cheaper to bring back. But it doesn't really matter either way. Actually, I think I'll put it on the scoundrel here, so. And then I'm going to decline on this. Hmm. Actually, I think I'll, I'll put the Menace on. I don't think it matters a whole lot, but... <clears throat> okay, not sure what we're up against here. Let's go Swift Spear into Kumano and see what they've got. Again, I think I'm not going to do Rage just because they're, they've got open mana here. Don't really want to play into it. Okay, there's Revelry. Alright, that's a nice draw. It's a good turn for Monstrous Rage. And we can just Monstrous Rage our scapegoat to keep it going. Actually, that was a that was a mistake. I should have put that monstrous rage on the swift spear. That was a mistake. Um, since we're not getting through with swift spear, maybe hold off to play with fire. Okay, yeah, definitely missed some damage there. So I should have put these rage on the swift spear. We could have pushed a little bit more damage, and then could have used play with fire. But we're still in a pretty good position. Okay, lockdown is brutal since we've got all of these Kumanos in the wings. That could really. Whew, that could take us out of it. That is the one card we really didn't want to see. Festivities is not going to do it. Okay, that's a good start. Oof, Union is rough. So I think potentially if we didn't make the mistake with the, um, the pump effect, we might have been able to get just enough through for lethal, so... token which is interesting okay now we're going to try to go ahead and refill all 
All right, we've only got two in the yard, so we can try to fill it up a little bit here and then potentially refill a little later. enough for else for um yeah removal here which is awkward so i think we wait for another token here we don't need to use in the festivities just yet And we've only got three poison tokens, so I think we can maybe wait one more turn on the festivities. The only three drop we have in our deck is two more copies of the um, invasion, so I think we can safely wait here. Sunfall makes me wish we didn't wait. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, we do have lethal if they don't have counters. So I guess let's try for the invasion, see if that gets through. Nope, they've got counters. And I think for the same reason, we just hold off on the festivities here. Now I think that since we've got Mishra's Foundry, it's worth playing this here just to kind of get this going. Must have Elspeth Smite beside you, sure. Okay, Codebreaker is good. We can definitely refill. It should only cost us two to flip. Yeah, and I think now if they attack with both of their tokens, we do have to respect it, um, since we are at 7 poison. And they have the Sunfall. Oof! Oh man, we are so close, but so far. Ah. Yeah, I think, I guess, it doesn't really matter if we play this here or not. I think, I guess on the off chance they have like a 1-1 one -one somehow with maybe like, um, if they have like another Sunset Revelry, maybe we hold it.
Oh, didn't quite get there. Oh well. Very close. But I think, yeah, that misplay cost me, so... And they had a very well-timed temporary lockdown. All right, opening hand looks good. Got a nice turn one, turn two. Up against blue white control. suspect it. Looks like a slightly different variant with all these uh, come into play tap lands. Could easily have the counter here. Um, I think, how do we want to play this? We just want to go for it and see if they've got no more lies. We could also just like lightning strike end of turn on their turn, which I kind of like. So I think that's still pretty good. It's not quite as a mana efficient, but. I don't think they can use this, this turn very effectively otherwise. Now they just want to sit there for Emperor. And we're willing to do this because we have another lightning strike if they decide to use their anchorage next turn. So now that they've got anchorage mana, I think we do have to hold for post combat. I guess we could also just attack just with Feldon here. Question is like I'd rather like save this to go face than get rid of their anchorage, but I mean slowing them down like on a mana is also pretty good. So yeah, we could also go like invasion plus end the festivities, and that's pretty good too. So I think actually attacking, letting them block is still pretty good. Now. We can go Invasion here. See if they want to counter it. We could also just wait again and do Lightning Strike, but I think this turn they will have a play. And here we can also hit our Feldon to get an extra card draw, which is great. Okay, I don't think we need to end the festivities here. So if they go board wipe here, we've got lethal in hand.
Yep, and that'll do it. Okay, that makes it easier too. But yeah, I just wanted to get some quick games in here. Um, let's take a look at the stats and let's see how we're doing. Okay, so we are currently 68% win rate, 13 wins, 6 losses, 70% win rate on the play, and 67% on the draw. So really happy with it so far. It's been doing great against the mirror, 4-1. Um, and, and so far doing well against blue-white control. We're 2 wins, 1 loss. 3-0 against Boros Convoke, really happy with that. 2-0 against Mono White, um, looks like 50-50, 1-1 with Demir. And then 0-2 against Esper, I think it's been like a mix of like X, Esper like Legends slash Midrange. So I, one of those games I definitely walked into a Virtue of Loyalty and uh, was not expecting it. So that was probably a mistake on my part. Um, 0 and 1 against Rakdos, and then 1 and 0 against Gruul, Picnic Ruiner deck. So, yeah, overall, this deck is just doing fantastic. Um, again, links for the deck list will be in the description. Thank you guys so much again for watching, and you guys are awesome. I appreciate you.